Circuit Court is reconvened. You may be seated. Maintain order in the court. I'm going to give my card number to my assistant out there to call her. Okay. Okay. All right, we're back on the record. State of Florida v. Ashley MacArthur, Case 17, CF 5844. The defendant is present with counsel. Assistant State Attorney is present. Anything from the state? No, Your Honor. Mr. John Barasa? Good afternoon, Your Honor. There is an issue I guess the court should start thinking of. It's not our next witness. Our next witness is going to be Rhonda Britt, but after that we're going to call a woman named Kay Townley. The purpose of calling her is she worked with Mrs. MacArthur at Pensacola Automatic Amusement. Can I interrupt you? I'm sorry? Can I interrupt you? I'm good. Okay. You're good? Yeah. She's good. So no issue? Doesn't sound like there's an issue. So what we're going to do as far as the plan is you call witnesses. When you're done calling witnesses, then if you want to say, Judge, can we have a moment? I can send the jury out. We can talk about, give you a moment to talk with your client and announce a decision. I'm going to ask some questions about testifying, not testifying. If that works for y'all. Yeah. Okay. Maybe the witness is on. She just called me. This is my assistant. You've seen the court, I'm sure. With the state at one time. Okay. So if we're ready, we have at least one witness out there, right? Three. Three. Okay. Let's go. All right. Who's handling those witnesses? We split them up. I'm handling Ron Britt. I'm handling Ms. Henselman. I'm handling Kate Townley. And I'm also handling Patrick Smith. Okay. So we're going to split them up. Okay. And so the first witness is Rhonda Britt. So that's Mr. Barry Barasat. Okay. All right. All right. And for the record, defendant is present with counsel. Assistant state attorney is present. Mr. Barry Barasat, call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Rhonda Britt, please. Raise your right hand, ma'am. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. All right. Have a seat. All right. Now you can pull that microphone down. Just put your hand there. Pull it down. Pull up close to it. Just because I can tell you're soft-spoken. State your name and spell your last name. Rhonda Britt, B-R-I-T-T. Okay. You may inquire. Hello, Mrs. Britt. Would you tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what your relationship is to our client? She's my daughter. Ashley McArthur. She's your daughter. And when was she born? August 22nd, 1977. Okay. And let me ask you this. She grew up in your household, correct? Yes, sir. She's one of how many children? I only have one child. Okay. And during the time that she grew up, I take it you had a close relationship with her and probably still do today, correct? Very close. Would you tell me, did you become aware of an automobile accident that occurred in, I think, approximately 2010? Yes, sir. You don't have to call. It's okay. Didn't mean to bump it. You're doing great on speaking up. You don't have to quite get that close, okay? Thank you. Maybe I ought to move it a little bit. Move it a little higher, but still lean in. Okay, yeah. It won't get germs. We had some records introduced, and I think at that time her name was Ashley Britt Nix. Is that correct? Yes. Was she married to one of the Nixes? Philip Nix. Philip Nix. Have you had occasion to observe her over the years since 2010 as a result of being around her, sometimes at work and other places? Yes. How often would you say daily you saw your daughter? I either saw her or talked to her every day. And were you aware of any problems that she had with her back as a result of that accident? Yes. Can you tell me what the prognosis was of her back? 
Can you tell me uh, if you're aware what, if any, limited uh, limitations that I had on her? Oh, yes. Um, she can lift heavy things. Um, it would hurt her back if she did. You, she'd walk funny, and you could tell she was in pain. Um, so, yeah, she had been having back trouble since the accident. Have you ever seen her uh, at your home? Yes. How about uh, the uh, automatic amusement? Oh, yes. Have yes. you seen her there as well? Yes. You don't work there any longer, do you? No. But during the times that you saw her there, did you see her ever lift any heavy objects? No, she tried not to because um, it hurt her back. If, if she did strain her back, how, how could you tell that? Well, could, you could tell the way she walked. You kind of, she'd walk sideways and it's just a different walk, you know, you kind of, you're walking like this. Has she, has she, to your knowledge, ever had any surgery since that time? No, they told her that she'd probably have to have surgery at some point, but they didn't want to do it then because she was young. And uh, have you ever seen her lift anything like a 50 pounds concrete bag or anything that heavy? No. And is that to this day? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Brady, you don't know what your daughter did when you weren't around, now did you? That would be impossible. Thank you. Anything else? No further questions. Thank is she free, completely released? Yes, she is. You're released, ma'am. You're free to go. Thank you. Don't discuss your testimony. Call your next witness. Kay Townley. All right. Kay Townley. All right, ma'am, raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say, I do. I do. Okay, have a seat. Pulling up to the microphone. State your name and spell your last name. Marla K. Townley, T-O-W-N-L-E-Y. You may inquire. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, what do most people that know you refer to you by? What do they call you? K. You go by K? Yes, sir. Uh, can you tell the jury, uh, what do you do for a living? I work at Pensacola Automatic Amusement. And they've heard a little bit about that business, but what does Pensacola Automatic Amusement do? They have like pool tables and uh, juice boxes in different locations, bars or game rooms. How, how long have you worked for Pensacola Automatic Amusement approximately? S about six years. And can you kind of describe for the jury what uh, your duties or responsibilities are for Pensacola Automatic Amusement? I collect the money out of machines and make sure everything's working. And if I have to move equipment, move it to wherever it needs to go. Okay. Through your employment at Pensacola Automatic Amusement, did you uh, get the opportunity to meet my client, Ashley MacArthur? Yes, sir. Is it fair to say you've known her? Have you been working there about six years, so you've known Mrs. MacArthur, give or take six years? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, over the years, uh, since you've been working there, you still work there today, correct? Yes, sir. Have you all had an opportunity to work together at times? Yes, sir. As part of your job, do you, to expand on that a little more, do you go to these local businesses and collect money out of the machines? Yes, sir. Okay. And if there's a machine that's broken, do you fix it yourself or try to? Try to, yeah. And you also mentioned moving machines. Why would you need to move a machine? Can you explain that to us? Like if something's broken, it, it can't be fixed there. you got to take it back. Or if a location shuts down or may hire somebody else, we have to take our stuff out. And okay. With sometimes a... a, a a venue wanted like instead of having a one arcade game on a different arcade game and y'all switch them out or something like that would that happen on occasion you switch them out yes sir okay the work that you do for pensacola automatic amusement um at times is it, is it physically demanding yes sir can you tell us what makes your job physically demanding at times some of them machines is heavy <laughs> <laughs> and okay. even the quarters that i carry sometimes are you get four or five hundred dollars in quarters, it gets kind of heavy. Okay, so you, you'll go into a business, take the money out, and then have to carry it somewhere, bank or whatever? Well, it's usually just to the car, and then it'll go to the bank. Okay, all right. 
During your time that you've known Ashley MacArthur and y'all have worked together, um, from your observations of her, did you ever notice her or her appear to have back issues or problems? Yes, sir. Can you tell the jury a little bit about that? What, I had, what did you see that made you, you know, think there's something wrong with her back? Me personally, my back hurts every once in a while. Uh -huh. And when it does, you get to walk. And she had to walk a few times. Okay. So. These machines um, that you would move, you mentioned they were quite heavy. I, I'm assuming that included pool tables, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, a jukebox, would yes, you all move those? Video games? Yes, sir. Okay. At times, would you have to, by yourself, move those machines? Some of them? Yes, sir. How would you do that? Usually, I try to get help. Okay, but if, <laughs> if, you, don't, if you don't have help, how do you move them? Do you use a, a, like a dolly or anything? Uh, yes, yes, oh. sir. I have dollies. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned at times, obviously, you would need help. With those big moves, was Ashley MacArthur ever helping you with the, moving the big equipments? Usually we had to move something, like we get somebody else. Who, who, would, who were some people that she would bring to help you move these machines? There was Zach's brother, Jake. And, and let's just clear, Zach's brother, Jake, Zach, you, are you referring to Zach MacArthur? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Who else would you get? Um, there's a guy that lived at the shop, uh, James Hayes. James Hayes, okay. And then with Sam, I don't know her last name, but she used to work out there at uh, Sticks Pool Hall. She okay. helped quite a bit. All right, so it sounds like in moving these equipments where you needed help, Ashley with Mark MacArthur would make sure other people came out there to help you. Yes, sir. May I have one moment? Mm -hmm. No further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Johnson. And Anna, if it's a yes or no, just answer yes or no. Okay. Ms. Talley, are you familiar with adrenaline? <laughs> yeah. It would, yeah. Okay. What is adrenaline to you? It just it's like something scares you and you just jump up and go faster or just when you get excited about something. And can it make you do stuff that you couldn't normally do? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. No redirect. Is she completely released? She is yes. released from our system. You're free to go? Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Somebody is happy <laughs> with something I said. All right, ma'am, just don't comment on the way out. Just keep moving. All right, call y'all's next witness. Uh, Patrick Smith. Okay. All right, whose phone was that? Ma'am, turn off your phone. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Have a seat. Pull up to the microphone. State your name and spell your last name. Patrick Smith, S-M-I-T-H. You may inquire. Good afternoon, sir. Um, Mr. Smith, what do you do for a living? Um, I was doing HVAC. I'm currently unemployed at the moment. Okay. How old are you, Mr. Smith? 22. Are you from this area? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, sitting over his table is my client, Ashley MacArthur. Do you somewhat know her? I've uh, known her for about maybe six months okay. during that time. All right. So were you all close friends or anything like that? We hung out. Um, I'd shoot pool at sticks regularly, so and that we was talk gonna, regularly. Apologize for interrupting. That was going to be my next question. Uh, how did you meet or somewhat get acquainted with Ashley MacArthur? Um, through Brandon. Um, I'm sorry? Through Brandon. Brandon who? Beatty. Okay. Um, I was shooting pool by myself one night and it's getting close to closing time. He approached me and asked me if I wanted a drink. Okay. So you met Mrs. MacArthur from spending time shooting pool up at Sticks Billiards? Yes, sir. All right. Do you know um, a young man named Kyle Britt. Yes, sir. Um, how do you know Kyle Britt? Um, I know him from Sticks. I want to draw your attention to around September 9th, 2017. It was a Saturday. Um, 
did you and a bunch of people, including Mrs. MacArthur, Kyle Britt, kind of go out and have a, a really good time? Yes, sir. All right. You remember that night? Yes, sir. At least some of it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I think there was a couple strip clubs, bars, correct? Yeah. W was that the first night that you had met Kyle Brick, you think? Um, I'm not completely sure. Um, I'd like to give you the most accurate answer please, I could, but I'm not sure. Do. Okay. Um, after meeting and getting to know Kyle Britt, did there come an occasion where um, you were hired to do some work out on what we've been referring to as the Britt Family Farm, a piece of property off of Britt Road in Cantonment, Florida? By Kyle, yes sir. Okay, H how did that come about? Tell us about that. Um, I was shooting pool one night. Um, I had recently got my business license to do lawn work. Um, and he asked me, he asked me if I did lawn work. I don't know how, I don't know if he knew I had a business license, but he asked me if I did lawn work. I said yes. Um, he asked me how would I feel about weed eating the property for $80 um, and do it regularly. All right, let me stop you right there. So after that night of, of partying, um, did in fact you go out to the Brit farm uh, to do some work out there at the request of Kyle Britt. I did. All right. How, did you, you go out there one time, more than one time to do work? I believe I only went twice. All right. Let's talk about the first time you went out there. Um, can you give us approximately how long after that good night y'all had approximately you, when you went out to the uh, farm? Um, few weeks maybe. Okay. Um, not completely sure. Sure. I know, we understand it's an estimate. Tell the jury how it was that you ended up finding your way out to the farm that first time you went out there. I went, um, can you, can you right. explain a little more? I'm sure. confused. Sure. Sure. No, it's okay. The first time you went out to the farm, did Ashley MacArthur go with you? Yes, sir. All right. Um, did y'all meet at a gas station somewhere? Yes, sir. And did you see Ashley MacArthur give uh, or lend her vehicle to another person and, and kind of drive off? Yes, sir. Did you happen to see that person in this courthouse today? Um, kind of looked like her little <laughs> short afro fuzzy hair. Okay. Um, and so did you end up that day, did you end up driving Ashley MacArthur out to the Brit farm? I did. Uh, did you know how to get out there? No. Okay. So... Once you got out to the farm, were you given directions about what to do out there uh, by anybody? Uh, yes. Who, who gave you those directions? Kyle. That Kyle Britt? Yes, sir. All right. And what, what was your scope of work? What were you supposed to do out there once you got out there and kind of saw what you were working with? Tell the jury about that. Um, I was supposed to weed eat, you know, the perimeter, you know, everywhere that a lawnmower couldn't get. Um, do you still yes, have the picture? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, don't worry about oh, that I'm right sorry. now. I'm just, I want you to describe. You're okay. to weed eat. Um, okay. Weed eat it down the fence line going down the driveway on both sides. Um, weed eat it around the house. They had a little runaround pen where the, you'd keep a horse. Weed eat around that. Um, they had a barn. I'd weed eat around that. Um, they had trailers behind the barn. I'd weed eat around those. Um, and pretty much just the general perimeter of the house and everywhere that a lawnmower could not get. When you were given your scope of work, um, I'm assuming that day you did it? You did what was requested of you? I did. Okay. And when you got there that first time, did Kyle Britt and Ashley MacArthur remain at the farm? When I did it the first time? Yes, sir. Uh, no, they left. All right. Did you recall how they how they left the farm? Did did Kyle Britt drive them away? Um, I believe it was Kyle's car. Um, I believe it was Kyle driving. Um, they said they had some errands to run, so they'd leave me to my work. Okay, and so you were left out, as far as you know, you were out there on the farm by yourself. Yes, sir. Okay. Fair to say you probably were out there, give or take, two hours? Hour, give or take, maybe okay. an hour and a half. All right. Now... While you were out there doing your work, um, that first visit, um, 
Did you notice anything, like, let's just talk about, did you notice to see any blood anywhere? No, okay. sir. Did you see any, like, what appeared to be drag marks where something heavy could have been moved anywhere? No, okay. sir. Did you see any indications around the property where it looked like maybe recently concrete had been made or anything like that? No, no. sir. Um, what about any potting soil that was, you know, not in pots, but in a different location, kind of unusual location sitting out anywhere? No, no. sir. Did you see any discarded um, bags for concrete thrown in the woods or just in the lake or anywhere unusual like that? No, sir. What about discarded bags of potting soil anywhere unusual out there? No, sir. You mentioned that you went out there for a um, second work visit. Yes, sir. Approximately how much time passed from visit number one to visit number two? I'd say... Maybe early October. Your second visit was in early October? I'd say, yes, sir. Okay. And how did you get out there the second time? I drove. Okay. And when you got out there the second time, was Mr. Britt, Kyle Britt, out there? No, sir. I believe he was with family in a different state. Okay. And your scope of work the second time you were out there, what was that? It didn't change. It was the same. Spend approximately the same amount of time, an hour to an hour and a half out there? Yes, sir. And during this uh, second visit, um, similar questions, did you notice any, anything I mentioned to you last time, drag marks, blood, concrete, co uh, potting soil, anything like that? No, sir. Anything unusual that st stuck out during that visit uh, no, on the sir. property? Now, focusing on visit one and two, obviously when you were out there, did you did you know anything about a missing person at that time on either of those visits? No, sir. Okay. So were you looking for evidence of a crime when you were out there? No, sir. Now though, silly question, but I'm gonna ask you. When you're doing when you're doing uh, your work, I'm assuming you want it to look what, good or bad? Great. Okay. So you're paying attention to what you're doing? Yes, sir. Trying to do the best job you can? Yes, sir. Are you trying to do detailed work? I'm just trying to do the best job I can. Okay. May I have one moment? Let's go back to the first visit. When you were out on the property, um, did you notice any um, unusual odors or smells that caught your attention? No, sir. What about the second visit? No, sir. Um, first visit, any maggots or anything any, like that anywhere? No, sir. Second visit? No, sir. Not a buzzard in the sky. No further questions. All right, Ms. Jensen is going to ask you questions. If it's just yes or no, just answer yes or no. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Smith, did you stay on Kyle's property? In other words, you didn't go on any of the other properties, correct? No, ma'am. Do you need to go outside the fence lines or anything like that? No, ma'am. Thank you. No redirect, Your Honor. Is he completely released? He is completely released. You're free to go. Thank you. <laughs> Don't discuss your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Who's our next witness? Ms. Hanselman. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. I do. Have a seat. Pull up to the microphone. State your name and spell your last name. Nicole Heinzelman, H-E-I-N-T-Z-E-L-M-A-N. And can you spell your first name also? Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E. You may inquire. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Heinzelman. Good afternoon. Could you tell me what your occupation is? I'm the crime scene supervisor at the Pensacola Police Department. Okay. And I want to take you back to uh, September and October of 2017. Were you still working with the Pensacola Police Department as a crime scene tech? Yes, I was the crime scene supervisor at the time. And what was your job at that time? Crime scene supervisor. Now, as, as the crime scene supervisor, did you have occasion to participate in any searches at the Rain Tree address? Yes, I did. Do you remember if you participated in one or more? 
Just one. And was I think we've heard about a search that occurred on September the 18th, where the officers searched without a warrant, and then there was one on October the 24th that we've had testimony about. When was yours? Was yours on October the 19th? It was. Okay. And who went out there with how, who went out there to search? Do you recall? Uh, it was members of the Pensacola Police Department. And was this pursuant to a search warrant, the first search warrant on the property? I don't know whether it was the first search warrant or not. I know there was a search warrant. Okay. And approximately how many people went out to uh, conduct that search? Do you have any idea? I don't. More than two or three? Yes, there were several of us. And what was your job at that particular time? I went before the um, search had started and I documented the entire house, all the levels, with digital photographs. So you took photographs of everything in the house, is that correct? I took photographs of the house, yes. How many photographs did you take? I don't recall. Well, you got an estimate? Approximately maybe 100. And do you have a report in there that reflects how many you took, or are you just going by memory? I did not in my report indicate how many photographs I took. Do you know how much evidence that was documented and collected? I don't. Do you have any idea of the approximate number of items that were collected? From that search warrant? Yeah. I personally did not collect any items of evidence. But you documented it, correct? I took photographs as the search was being conducted on the main level of the floor, the location of items of evidence, and other members of the Pensacola Police Department were the actual ones who collected them. So of the 100 photographs that you took, some of those were of evidence that they collected, is that correct? Yes. And by documenting, you mean you identify the object and take a photograph of it? Yes. Do you recall uh, seizing any black shorts in the basement? No. Do you recall any of the items that you seized, or that you extracted, that, that you documented? I, there was, I documented on the main level, there were some firearms, there was some receipts, there was some digital uh, media, there were laptops. Okay. Uh, did you document any items in the basement? I did not. Okay. Who, who worked the basement, do you recall? Um, it, I think it was uh, crime scene analyst Justin Cooper. And once you document the evidence and photograph it, uh, you said, I thought initially, that you took photographs all over the house. Yes, I did. Even in the basement? Yes. Okay. Was that part of the documentation? Yes. Are you aware of any evidence that was collected that was related or established that Ms. MacArthur killed Taylor Wright? No. Is she completely released? Yes. You're free to go. Don't discuss your testimony. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So we have a moment, John. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I need to take up something outside your presence. If you can leave your notepads and pencils, and we'll be back with you as soon as we can. Do you all want to go in the back and talk to her, or you want to talk to her there? She decided that she does not prefer to testify. Okay. I'm going to ask some questions. Raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth? If so, say I do. All right. Now speak up for me just so I get a good record. State your name. Ashley All right. Ms. MacArthur, have you had many opportunities to talk to your attorneys about a decision to testify or not testify? Yes. And then I think just an estimate, we took a break and maybe about 10 minutes you spent with them right now. Is that a fair, about five to 10 minutes? Yes. All right. You understand that you have the absolute right to remain silent. No one can make you testify, and the jury is not to consider that at all in making a decision on whether you're guilty or not guilty. Do you understand? Yes. 
I will in fact give an instruction that tells them that, um, that they cannot consider that. Do you understand? There can be advantages to testifying and disadvantages to testifying. Have you talked to your attorney about those? Yes. This is one of those decisions, there's about four, that the defendant herself gets to make at the end of the day. Mr. Barossett said, we all agree. But at the end of the day, it's your decision. Do you want to testify? Is anybody forcing you or threatening you into not testifying? Is this your free will decision? Yes. And are you on any medication today? Alcohol, illegal drugs. Is there anything affecting your ability to understand what we're doing? Okay. Then um, when the jury comes back in, I'm going to announce or say, Mr. Bar Barry Barasit, and you just say defense rests, and we'll take it from there. Ms. Jensen, do you plan to call witnesses? I do. Okay. Then we'll just proceed there, and when we get to the next um, stopping point, we'll stop. Okay? Before the jury comes back in, can I just run out sure. for a minute? Sure. Mm -hmm. Exhibits in through Dr. Roberts, I believe 10 exhibits total. Mm. 11 or 12? There's 12. 12, I right there. Jurors in the box. All right, for the record, defendant is present. With counsel, assistant state attorney is present. Mr. Barry Barasin. Your Honor, at this time the defense rests. All right, Ms. Jensen, do you have any. Re um, yes, ma'am. State call or recalls Detective Gigliotti. Okay, you're still under oath from yesterday. State your name. Richard Gigliotti. I've got a new court reporter, so please spell your last name. Yes, G H I. G-L-I-O-T-T-Y. You may inquire. Detective Gigliotti, you testified earlier about um, the cell phone download from Ms. MacArthur's phone from the October 2017 date. Correct. Okay. And um, did you also see some photos of Ms. MacArthur doing various physical activities on different dates? I did. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? You may. I'm going to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 159. If you just take a look through that and see if you recognize those images. I do. Okay, and are those photos from Ms. MacArthur's cell phone, again, from the October 2017 phone? They are. Okay. Judge, at this time I move state to 159 into evidence. No Received as states 159. This is the uh, first page, and is this just again showing the identifying information for Ms. MacArthur's phone? It is. This is going to be page 2104 of these records, and if you look at this line at the bottom, 1126, um, are you looking? Yes. Um, if you click on that link, does this picture become bigger? It does. And is that the image from page 2104? It is. This is page 3106, line 
on the uh, image on page 21 of 4. Capture date is October 15th, 2016, marked at 11.21 a.m. And then this image on page 3106, what's the capture date on that? You have to do the time, just the date. November 27, 2016. This is page 3332, line 87.52. And is this the image for that line? It is. This is page 3378, line 9115 at the top. Is this the image for that page? It is. This is page 3397, line 9269. Is this the image for that line? That it one? is. This is page 5879, line 28223. Is this the image for that page? It is. Page 6300, line 31300. Is this the image for that page? It is. Can you read that first green bubble, please? Sure. I stayed at my house and had Kyle pick me up there this morning. He helps Kay and I move machines. This is page 6567, line 33121. Is this the image for that page? It is. This is page 3142, line 7214. And can you see the capture date on that? April 2nd, 2016. And is that the image? It is. Page 6023, line 29330. Is that the image? It is. This is page 3145, line 7241. Is this the image for that page? It is. Page 2781, line 4997. What's the capture date on that? April 1st, 2017. And is this the image for that? It is. On page 2840, line 5347, is this the image for that page? Is 5367? Yes, 5367. Yes, yes, it is. Correct. Okay, what's the capture date on that image? November 12th, 2016. And does this appear to be at the very top of a like football stadium or something? It is. Thank you, those are all my questions. John Burroughs, it's going to ask you questions. Remember, if it's yes or no, answer yes or no. Good afternoon. Good to see you again. Yes, sir. Did you find any pictures and all going through this of Mrs. MacArthur carrying anything? Uh, I believe there was some of her carrying guns. One on, point, on a, a rifle. With, yes. with a shoulder strap? Other than that? There's a lot of pictures, so not that I can recall. 
old case, right? You've had time to look through it. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, may seem, but when that first picture you showed of her scuba diving, have you ever been scuba diving? Yes, sir. Okay. Have you ever been in the water? Yes, sir. Okay. When you're in the water, it's buoyant, it keeps you up? Yes, sir. Okay. No further questions. Nothing further. Is he completely released? He's completely released. You're completely released. Don't discuss your testimony. But leave your exhibit. Yes. All right, Ms. Jensen. State recalls Jeff Brown. All right, you're still under oath. Have yes, a seat. Pull up to the microphone. State your name. Jeffrey Brown. Okay. All right. This thing, rather than y'all leaving, I'm going to pop outside for a second. I'm not wandering off, but y'all sit tight. I am leaving the courtroom, but it'll be okay, and I'll be back in about three minutes. And that's just easier than y'all leaving and me. I just need to check on one thing quickly, and I'm going to ask everybody just remain seated, and I'll be back, okay? Y'all don't discuss it, the case, all right? Thank you. Ms. Jensen's just... Okay, state your name again. Jeffrey Brown. And I reminded you you were under oath. Yes, ma'am. All right. Detective Brown, you tested, testified earlier about um, Ashley MacArthur's cell phone download from September of 2017. Correct. Okay. Did you also see some photographs of her doing some physical activities on different dates in the phone records? Yes. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Will you take a look through that and see if you recognize it? No objection. Okay. It's received as states 160. And permission to publish? You may publish. And is just, is this just again the identifying information <coughs> on Mrs. MacArthur's cell phone? It is. This is page 24555 and line, let's see, 2561. Um, what is the capture date for this picture? 315 2015 at 3 p.m. Okay. And is that the image for that page? It is. Page three one one three zero, line seven one one eight nine. What's the capture date? You don't have to do the time, just the date. Nine twenty three two thousand sixteen. And it, oh. May we approach? <laughs> Council approaching the court for the folks shall not want to stand. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm sorry to say that I need you to step outside again and we needed to discuss something outside your presence. I appreciate your patience with us. Just pads, pencils, don't discuss the case. Thank you. Okay, everybody have
have a seat and relax. I think I have described it at the bench, um, but just I had excluded and at particular exhibit, Ms. Jensen had removed it from the physical exhibit, but did not think and, uh, about removing it from the PowerPoint, and somehow it was clicked on. I think the defense, the state is asserted, and the defense does not disagree that it was an inadvertent. Correct, Mr. John Barossa? Uh, absolutely. I think it was inadvertent. It went up. I estimated for a second most two seconds, um, but um, it was shown. And I'm going to ask that Ms. Jensen, just since I've got my staff attorney in here, just put it up so she can see it, how it looked on the screen itself. Oh, well, I deleted it <laughs> after I shut it down. But I have the picture itself. I, mean, I think we probably need to make that part of the record anyways now. Right. Can. All right, so do you want to make that, why don't we make that a defense exhibit? Yes, you want to make a defense exhibit that could be defense exhibit number 13, Mr. Please. John Barasa? Yes, ma'am. It'll be received as defense 13. The reason I was asking that it be shown up there was not so that it went out on the media, but just so that Ms. Watson saw the size of the sure. image as it went up there, but it's gone now. Um, I think the question is that the defense needs to decide is what they're going, if any motion you're going to make. Yes, Your Honor. As a pro defense, again, I would make a motion for mistrial. Um, it's clearly a highly prejudicial picture. Um, we understand what this charge is about. She's alleged to have shot someone in the back of the head with a firearm. That picture is her holding the firearm pointed almost directly at a camera. Um, yeah, so. Ms. Jensen, do you have anything you want to say on the subject? Judge, the only thing I would say is there has been so much testimony throughout this trial about Ms. MacArthur owning firearms, giving firearms to Brandon Beatty. There's been pictures of firearms that have been given to him that she has texted. Um, not only the ones that are in pictures, but he testified about her giving him shotguns and ARs. And I mean, I, there's no question that Ms. MacArthur has possessed firearms throughout this trial, which, I mean, not that that's a problem, but one picture of her in some camouflage that looks to be like a hunting picture. Um, and it's not pointed at the camera, it's pointed at an angle. Um, I don't think that is, is prejudicial enough to warrant a mistrial in this case. And would both state and defense agree that already introduced to the jury in, I think, 160 and perhaps 159 are photos of her in camouflage with firearms maybe on her shoulder, meaning it's a, a shoulder harness and holding a rifle or shotgun. Would you agree, Mr. John Barras? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, we're going to talk. I'll be back. All right. Y'all may be seated. Order. All right, the court has considered the defense's motion for a mistrial. When I sustained the objection to what is now Defense Exhibit 13, um, I really sustained it in an abundance of caution. And um, it kind of fell in that category in my mind of, you know, I'm just going to err on the side of caution, sustain the objection, and keep it out. Ms. Jensen is correct, and I don't think anybody disputes what she said, that, um, that we've had all sorts of testimony about guns, her owning guns, her giving guns, and her hunting, and other photos of her with a shotgun. And it was a very brief flash of a second or two. So I'm going to find that it is not a basis for a mistrial and deny the motion for a mistrial. Now, if y'all want me to give a curative instruction of any kind, something was flashed on the screen, it's not to be considered as any evidence of the case, I can, or we can just move on. Please. Okay, I, would, I mean, you can 
tell me what you like, or I can just say that. Something flashed on the screen and it was inadvertent. That, all right, Mr. Parasit, I'll give you one token for that. You've been very good about talking to the jury and, and you know, telling them their obligations. I just think with your instructions, you should tell them you've heard my instructions. This is not admissible evidence. You should not consider it in any way. Something to that effect. Okay. Uh, well, I was going to say something flashed on the screen. Right. Yeah. And that that is not admissible and you are not to consider it in any way. It was an inverted. Perfect. Okay. I understand you still have your motion for mistrial, but since I've ruled, that's what I will do at your request. Yes, ma'am. Good. Good. No, Mr. Barasset, you used your token. <laughs> this is Mr. John Barasset's witness. Okay, are we otherwise ready to go? Yes, ma'am. Wait, I'm waiting to see if we're going to have to approach five seconds after they. Okay, they say they're ready. All right, everybody, everyone may have a seat. For the record, defendant is present with counsel, assistant state attorney is present. I hope y'all wore your Fitbits today because we've been getting a workout y'all have. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, something flashed on the screen that was inadvertent. It has not been admitted into evidence, and you are not to consider it in any way. We're moving on. Ms. Jensen, uh, this is, state your name again. Jeffrey Brown. All right, I'm going to turn off the lights again. We're going to proceed. Thank you. Detective Brown, this is page 31130. If you'll look at line 71189, what is the capture date for that image? 9-23-2016. The capture date below that. Sorry, 6-1-2016. <laughs> it's okay. And is this the image for that page? Yes. This is page 31167. Line 71436, and what is the uh, capture date for this image? 5-30-2016. And is that the image itself? It is. This is page 31226, line 71822. Um, what is the capture date for that image? 4-2-2016. And is that the image itself? It is. Page 31231, line 71860. What is the capture eight, or excuse me, the capture date for that image? 5-30-2016. And is that the image? It is. This is page 31267, line 72099. What is the capture time or capture date? 8-5-2016. Is that the image? It is. And was this another image um, on Ms. MacArthur's phone for that same time frame? Yes, there was. This is page 31614, line 74389. What is the capture date? 7 8 2015. And is this the image? It is. And lastly, this is page 33089, line 84084. What is the capture date? 5-31-2016. And is that the image? For that it is. Page? Those are all my questions. Thank you. All right, Mr. John Barasa. No question, Your Honor. Is he completely released? Yes, ma'am. You're completely released. Don't discuss your testimony. Yes, ma'am. All right. Stay rested. I can't look at you because I have to tell you that we have to talk about stuff outside your presence. <laughs> 
but when you come back in, that will be the last trip for today. So don't discuss the case. Please leave your notepad and pencil. I'm sorry for one more trip out of here, but we'll bring you back in, okay? Okay, let's just talk about the plan. But before that, Mr. Barry Barossett, do you need to say anything? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, we want to renew our motion for judgment of acquittal now that all the evidence is in, uh, based upon the fact that we feel that there's no substantial evidence, especially proof beyond a reasonable doubt, that she committed this homicide or that she planned it in a premeditated design. So we move for a judgment of acquittal on that basis. We also, without going through the litany, we preserved a lot of issues in this case, pretrial limiting motions, motions to suppress, uh, cell right records, motions to suppress statements. Uh, we reserve all of those and would uh, renew our motion for mistrial on those issues, Okay, Ms. Johnson, do you want to say anything? No, you're right. All right, then I will um, deny the motion for judgment acquittal, rule consistently and denying the motions to suppress, deny the motion for mistrial, and all of that is noted and preserved for the record. So let's talk about the plan. Uh, Ms. Jensen, how long are you going to want for closing? Tomorrow. Judge, I don't have my PowerPoint completely together yet. So, I mean, obviously I don't want to sit here and talk so long that the jury falls asleep. But I would like, I mean, this has obviously been a long, complicated trial. So obviously I would like uh, probably at least an hour. Okay. Mr. Bar Who's doing closing? Mr. Barry Barassa? Yes. Are you going to be operating a PowerPoint? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Between you and Ms. Jensen, that should be interesting. And I will stay out of it also because I don't know how to do I'm it. I'm going to bring my own. <laughs> That's good because she's not sharing her PowerPoint. No, I'll you. share. Just don't ask me to operate it. Okay. And in fact, that raises another question about your equipment. Um, if you're going to have equipment, we need to talk about when you need to be here. But. Um, is an hour, I'm going to time, as I am you know, known to do, I'm going to hold you to the time. So, Mr. Barasset? I'm usually pretty succinct, but I mean, I don't want to be cut off 15 minutes either way, you know, I mean. Well, I'm, uh, no, no, there's going to be a time, and you tell me what the time is, and then I'm going to stop you. This is not flexible, Judge. Minutes. This is Judge Shackelford. How, what is our time? Minutes. I'm sorry? Hour 15 minutes. Ms. Jensen, that should be more than plenty? Yes. Okay. All right. This is what I'm proposing as a plan. Um, Mr. Barras, at what time do I need to have the courtroom open for you so that your people, your assistant, or someone is going to set up, or John is going to set up the PowerPoint? and the plugs, which I'm sure we can find a plug somewhere. You're entitled to have a plug. What, <laughs> what, uh, what time are you wanting to actually start? Well, I was thinking that what we would do is what we've done all week, which seems to be working, which is that they're told to be here at 8.30 and we start at 8.45 on the nose. I'd like to be in the courtroom between 8 and 8.15 just to test everything and Jeff, can we make that happen? We'll make it happen. Yes. Okay. Um, now, what I also propose, and I want to talk through this all before we bring the jury in so we know it all and I tell them and then send them home. What I typically do in these situations is say that I do not want to break up closing arguments with a long break. Ms. Jensen gets up, she does her thing, I offer them a comfort break. Not a comfort snack, you know, hangout break, but just a comfort break. Then Barry Barossett gets up, if they, then I offer another comfort, just comfort. And then Ms. Jensen uh, finishes, and then I give jury instructions. So I usually encourage them to eat a good breakfast and tell them I want them to have a consistent flow and not have a longer break. Any objection to that, Ms. Jensen? No, Your Honor. Mr. Barry Barassi. No, okay. So what we would do is plan for lunch. Let's see. We probably about 11:30 or so. 
um, something like that. And they would just go straight in, have lunch, and deliberate all at one time. I have a table also for my, a table for my PowerPoint. Table? Yes, to put my PowerPoint. On. Oh, like a cart thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I assume we can move that a little bit? Sure. Okay. I don't know who we have to have up here. I don't know if our IT people have to be here. Or is it just a matter of a plug? I have no idea. And I don't know if I have IT people available anyway, but I can... I can let them know and see if somebody can come down, but I can't commit because they're circuit-wide IT people. They move from place to place. I just don't want there to, I want us to come in at 845 and basically, you ready, Ms. Jensen? She hops up and we're off to the, the closing because I'm giving everybody the afternoon to get organized and prepared. I mean, Casey Watson's the PIO, and she's also circuit head staff attorney, but I don't think she's also our mechanical person. She has to draw the line somewhere. IT. She's not head of IT. I'm certainly not. I mean, I can, like I said, I can make a request that one of our IT people's here. At 8.05. It'd be great. And I, but I can't promise. I understand. That's why we're going to try to get here early and test everything and make sure we're not plugged. And don't unplug Ms. Jensen's stuff, for heaven's sakes. Okay. All right. Um, so our, unless there's something else that we need to discuss that affects the jury, I can have the jury come back in tell them the plan for tomorrow, give them a caution. I am now going to talk to them a little bit about the hurricane because this afternoon's an opportunity if they want to get a leg up, they can. And it's a long way off, but people are getting different pieces of information. I have one court security officer telling me it's blowing away completely. And then I've got something that says Category 4 headed to Florida. So, of course, East Coast. Not that we don't care about the East Coast. We care. But anyway, um, is there anything else that we need to talk about that would affect our start time tomorrow, Ms. Jensen? Or anything else we need to talk about that affects the jury and when we're starting? No, ma'am. Mr. Barry Barassi. No, Your Honor. Now, the one thing, since I am being so gracious to everyone... Uh, and giving y'all the time to do your best closing argument. It's an important case. I would assume that Mr. John Barossett, who may be working with you tonight, but still, I want the jury instructions, once they're uh, corrected, I think that maybe Branda would be nice enough to email them to everybody, and I want them reviewed tonight and any object and additional problems raised tonight by email, not tomorrow at 845 since I am giving y'all time tonight. John Barossett, are you in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that something Ms. Wright can do for us? Um, no, I mean, I would I will do them this afternoon. Okay. I, mean, I don't like to put that burden. Okay, yeah, I don't know. I've had people helping me with these this week, and um, a lot of moving parts to this. I'm fortunate to have a staff, uh, a credible staff helping me, too. So. Uh, I don't know that there are any major issues necessarily, right. but if you can email them to both and then John Barossett should respond and say, I found something else tonight or this afternoon, not tomorrow morning at 845. <coughs> and he's agreed to that plan. Great. Okay, let's bring the jury one last time. All right, and for the record, defendant is present with counsel, assistant state attorney is present. Have I mentioned how much I appreciate y'all? All right, before I, I, I've been given a sticky and I'm holding it so I won't forget it, so I'm going to say this first of all. The new code for the garage is good. 
apparently that makes sense to y'all. It's good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about where we are. The attorneys have each requested an hour and 15 minutes for closing, so that's two and a half hours. Look at the clock. I've got four, 30 minutes of, I haven't, by the way, we haven't, um, we have a draft of jury instructions, but we haven't worked on the jury instructions yet. So we would have to work on them. We gotta do closings. I gotta read the jury instructions, so it might be 5.30 or 6 before you would begin to deliberate. This, as you get, you know, is a serious and significant important case to both the state and the defense. I want to give them their best opportunity to make their best closing argument tomorrow. Today it would not be their best because they're trying to filter through the whole week just like y'all have it all in your heads. So even though I was hoping that we would be done by today, and I know this requires y'all to be gracious, I truly think that the best thing overall, given the seriousness of the case, is that I let you go today and we come back tomorrow and we're going to start right away with closing arguments. Um, I'm getting some nods, which is good. Let's talk about what's going to happen tomorrow. We're going to, I'm going to have you report at the same time. You guys have been doing a great job. Please be here on time tomorrow. Uh, I think Renee's going to send the information down at 8.30, a few minutes early, so everybody's here. We're going to try to start at 8.45, 8.47, as soon as I come in and say, are y'all good? We're gonna bring you in. Please have a hearty breakfast tomorrow. And the reason is this. Once we start that closing argument process, I like to keep going and only give comfort breaks. I'm not gonna make you go two and a half, three hours without a comfort break, but I don't want you going back and doing snacks and hanging out and kind of relaxing. What I'll do is Ms. Jensen is going to go first, and then when she finishes, I'll say, does anybody need a comfort break? If you do, fine, not a problem. Mr. Barasset will go second. I'll ask the same question at the end of his, and then Ms. Jensen potentially has some, if she has time left over, she gets the last word. And then I'll read the jury instructions. By that time, it'll be close to lunch, and we'll have lunch ordered for you, and we're going to probably have it delivered a little early tomorrow, like 1130. And you'll go back, and within a few minutes, you would have lunch, and you can start your deliberation process. But in fairness, I think it's good that you hear it, and it's sort of a consistent thing without much break. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so I've given you the thing about the code. Two things, two big things. You know, the first one is no streaming, no um, investigating, no researching. Don't let anybody say anything to you. We are in the home stretch. And by the way, once this case is over, if you want to talk about it, you can. It's not this rule. Once we're on the other side and we have a verdict, that's different. We got one more day. Um, do not do anything, do not research anything about this, anything connected to the case or the people and places in the case. Don't let anybody talk to you. Don't read. Uh, I checked the paper this morning, didn't see anything. Don't watch um, EAR tonight or KRG. Um, limit yourself to the sports section tomorrow in the newspaper. Uh, one more day. And... Yeah, I think that covers it. Y'all know the rules. You know how important it is. I'm counting on all of you. Um, so that takes care of that. Try to get a good night's rest if possible tonight. And the good news is y'all be fresh because possum story number one was well received. Possum story number two, not so much. And that means y'all are tired or you're just tired of me, which it could be both. But you're much appreciated. Okay, the other thing I want to talk to you about briefly, I have not mentioned it because I didn't want to add stress to anyone, but some of you, or all of you, may be aware that there's that hurricane out there. My assistant unbelievably said, what are you talking about today? And some of you may not know either. And I'm not trying to get you off on that because you can get worn out by watching certain 
um, updates on that, and I don't want you to. But I, I, it does not look like I'm the judge that's involved with the emergency, um, the emergency judge. It does not look from what I'm getting that it would even make landfall on the East Coast till Monday, tomorrow's Friday. Now, there's always plenty to do, but I need you to the extent possible to let that go and come here and just be about this like you have been all week. And then we're gonna be done. I said you'd be done no later than Friday and I, we are. So you might, if you felt like it today, you could certainly be thinking about things. If it helps you take stress off of you for next week, you know the things, money, gas, food, water, a plan, your important papers. I always like to say I've got a box, it's true, I've got a box that's got all my insurance, photos of the house, weddings for my first husband, wedding photos. He's still my first husband, but in case, you know, that's uncertain if he's going to be my first or last. We'll see. Those sorts of things. Somebody suggested to me the other day something I hadn't heard. Prescriptions. If you're low on prescriptions, think about getting prescriptions refilled. If you have prescriptions for your animals, you may not be surprised to hear my animals are medicated because they live with me. Um, again, that's something to think about. I'm not trying to stress you because again, we are Floridians and we are Scambia County citizens and we are hopefully mostly prepared. But if it's helpful this afternoon to be thinking those things, then you could take advantage of it, okay? But otherwise, I do appreciate y'all. You've had a good attitude all week. I know the attorneys and the defendant appreciate you. I'm gonna release y'all now. You're gonna leave your notepads and pencils one last time when you, when you deliberate, you're gonna actually take those back with you, but you're leaving them one more night. Parker's gonna secure them one more night. We are gonna use the time to work on the jury instruction and verdict form. You're gonna be back here tomorrow at 8.30. You've got your code, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. Everybody good? Thank y'all. And if you want to stay, you can. We're going to talk about jury instructions. This is like watching paint dry, but you are welcome to stay if you want. But if you're leaving, leave quietly. Uh, apparently, someone else is trying to help us also who's listening in. I guess that's the benefit of the live stream. And wants to know what is it you think you need from IT tomorrow. She's kind of standing by. I said what... I would say what y'all need is to make sure that you have an ability to plug in whatever needs to be plugged in with all this other equipment moving around. But is that, I'm going to kind of defer to Mr. John Barossett on this. I, I think that's it. Yeah, just make sure there's enough plugs. And we have, it looks like there's already a power strip there. We have another power strip. So. Can you come? I've been directed to say that we cannot provide a projector or anything, and I don't think you asked for that. If you come with a setup like Ms. Jensen's, my thought of the IT people is just making sure that safely we have all the stuff kind of make sure it's plugged in correctly, and y'all are you're going to do your own test. So you're going to have a cart, you're going to have a projector. We have the screen. That's really all we're providing is a plug and a screen. But I thought it might be helpful in case there was a wrinkle so that it, we weren't delayed at 845 and everybody's nodding in agreement. So uh, Carrie Igney's placed a request out there. Apparently all the IT people are scattered among the circuit as I thought they might be, but hopefully one of them would be available. So Mr. John Barossett, if you're here about 805 or so, they'll be here yes, to help. And we're going to open the courtroom. All right. So now we're moving on to jury instructions. <laughs> I guess there's instructions to my staff about the problem we have on the uh, power pump. She's taking care of. About the what? Power pump. She was taking care of something on the power pump. Okay. That's why I'm trying to get it done. Okay. Well, that sounds good. 
All right, how are we, are we gonna put them up here? Oh, no ma'am. <laughs> All right, has everybody got their copy? Uh, they have their copies. Oh. I prepared them, so I just need to know what to change. Okay, we're ready. Okay, well, the first thing that I know of um, is on the verdict form. Um, are you satisfied, are you the one, Mr. Barry Barras, that I'm talking this through with? Are you my person, Barry Barasset? Yes, with consultation with my son. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay. Are you satisfied with the verdict? I need you to say something out loud. It yes, looks, we looks, accept it. It looks like. Okay. The only thing that my people noticed that there's some back and forth on whether it's necessary, but I don't see how it hurts to include this, is on guilty of first degree murder with a firearm, adding with a firearm as charged in the indictment. Okay. And that might help avoid a potential issue. Okay. Just add with a firearm. Any objection, Mr. Barry Barasa? No, Your Honor. Okay. Before we go on, let me, something I've been meaning to do. Ms. MacArthur, you're still under oath. Are you satisfied with the defense provided by Barry and John Barasa? Yes. Set aside my decisions that you may disagree with. Um, is there anything that you wanted them to do that they did not do? Speak up a little. No, ma'am. Okay. And is there anything they did that you said, don't do that, and they did it anyway? No. Okay. All right, thank you, ma'am. Let's go to the instructions themselves. If I need to know anything. <coughs> oh. <coughs> okay. Uh, we're going to step in the back for just a second with the staff attorneys and see if they have anything themselves to, to comment on, and then I'll be right back out if y'all want to sit tight. It won't, it won't take long. Are you good, Janine, or do you need a break? Renee, do you need a break? Pardon? Everybody just can remain seated. I'll be back in just a few minutes. I didn't understand one second. <laughs> 